Hello, and welcome to the Studio Magazine interview series. I'm Aditha Karkera, Chief Data Officer for Deloitte's Government and Public Services. And today I'm delighted to have with me Ram Ayer, the Chief Data Officer for the Department of Food and Drug Services. Ram, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, data literacy continues to come up, Ram, as a unique challenge in most CDOs that I talk to, right? And it's it's no longer just a work skill. It has become a life skill that you need pretty much in the digital age that we live today. Uh, what are some of the other challenges that you face in day-to-day -day in your CDO role? Uh, and I'm asking that because, you know, every organization is different. While there are some CDO challenges that I hear constantly repeated, I'm sure there are some that are unique to your organization and to your role. Would you want to expand on that? Yeah, I think our challenges are, you hear the standard things, right? That, oh, you know, you've got to learn how to work the uh, the federal system or the, uh, the, the government systems in terms of uh, procurement, talent, et cetera. My challenge is slightly different. I think we have tremendous potential within the agency. We have lots and lots of highly trained, as I mentioned, quantitatively inclined uh, people who have joined the agency with a mission and with the view to make a difference. So my job as the CDO is to make sure that some of those people and their skills are put to use to their full potential. It's a unique challenge. I see that as an opportunity as much as a challenge. And our early indications are we've done a good job by really being a catalyst, uh, nurturing the growth and offering the right uh, forums, removing the friction in the system so that they can really perform to their potential. To me, that is the biggest challenge and it's a great opportunity. What a great perspective, Ram. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm going to pivot slightly onto a different topic right now. So I know FDA has had several digital strategies recently, including your leadership modernization action plan, the cybersecurity modernization action plan, and your data modernization action plan. Uh, you've been the CDO for about three years now. You've published your data strategy as well as launched successful, several successful data-driven initiatives. In your mind, what is the value of publishing a data strategy? And what are some of the steps that you would recommend organizations take after releasing their data strategy? Yeah. Um, I think this is also one of the uh, examples where the process is equally important or maybe even more important than uh, the output. Because when, just like I mentioned about the master data uh, approach that we are taking, when we built our strategy, we did not do that in um, isolation. We took a lot of input from our internal stakeholders. We took their perspective into um, into consideration. And um, through that process, we actually got buy-in for our implementation. So it's important that the process is uh, collaborative and it's inclusive. That really helps. So that I would certainly recommend that. And the second thing, especially with the, you know, the federal agencies, this becomes a truly a public document. And it allows us to test our implementation against the North Star that we established using these published documents. Um, it has to be at a strategic level, at a high enough level to cover and adapt to new things that are coming up. Um, because when we published it, it, AI was not as of, uh, as much of a hype as it is today. So, but we still can fit that into our strategy, right? So it is very consistent. So it has to be at the level, but at the same time, it should not be so high a level that you cannot use it to implement. So we've tried to strike that balance. So what I would recommend to for people uh, is focus on the process because that helps you do with change management and keep it at the right balance between uh, not having to require you to publish a document every two years, um, and the ability to implement and use it as a North Star. Thanks, Ron, for sharing that. Um, are there specific projects in your mind that you are most excited about advancing uh, coming out of either your data strategy or other operational needs that you could expand on? Yeah, the one I'm uh, truly excited about is um, what I observed in the last two to three years. Um, 
FDA moves from one particular public challenge to another one, and many of them come out of nowhere. Um, so it is difficult for us to predict what would come today, tomorrow. So it is important for us to create a system that is nimble and can respond fast, uh, faster than what we've traditionally been able to do. And to that effect, what, what we are doing is, instead of responding to every problem as if it's a new problem, and it becomes a kind of an episodic exercise, I'm trying to create a set of playbook and processes um, supported by strong data foundation and a strong talent, so we can create the search capacity uh, when this when there is a shortage for a particular item or when there is a recall uh, for a particular product, et cetera, how can we do it faster, cheaper, and then we can learn from each iterative exercise so that the next time we respond, it's faster and better and cheaper for, for the taxpayer. Uh, I'm really excited that we made great progress in that. Um, we are launching a service. We call it the data analytics as, as a service. It's an internal service. And we have taken the, the data, the process, the talent, and the ability to operate in that framework as a key consideration. And we are testing it on one or two problems already. And we think that it has a great promise uh, to meet some of the goals that I, I mentioned. So I'm really passionate about that. A subset of that is the talent scaling that I mentioned. Um, I mentioned about, you know, we have about 36 data scientists that we could say are certified um, and can work on the type of problems that we want them to work on, but we would like to turn that into 100 to 200 um, in the network who can really provide that type of a search capacity, but also equally important, while we don't need the search capacity, they're actually helping to create the data culture to solve the problems in their own offices and centers using the tools that we have provided. And we will continue to invest in those through a central funding rather than asking for um, you know, piecemeal funding from each of the groups. So those are the two areas I'm really passionate about. I think by doing this, we create that positive flow that will uh, uh, sustain itself without requiring the central uh, supervision and the central control. Ram, you made me think of something else as you were talking about that, uh, and this ties back to you know upskilling and your data strategy efforts that are focused on AI. Uh, you mentioned AI as a strategic area and of responsibility for your office as well. Um, as you are implementing your data strategy, are there specific initiatives uh, in which FDA is implementing AI specifically? And are there any examples that you're able to share with the audience? Yeah, we have quite a few examples of um, uh, use of AI. Um, what we, we want to look at AI at multiple levels, right? One is on the operations. Um, I think on the operations, we can uh, learn um, and we can uh, test some smaller models um, and I think we will be a little more aggressive in that area. Then there is the productivity side. Um, you know, there are capabilities from the large vendor that are coming up. We will be considering those as part of our productivity, whether it's in the uh, office suite or it is in some of the other operational areas. So th those will be certainly considered. But there's a larger issue on the policy side, you know, when it comes to regulation of the devices or, um, you know, submissions, et cetera, those will take longer. Those will have to be very diligent. Um, the centers will lead those efforts and we'll be supporting them. Um, and we have, um, we are also working with uh, multiple agencies and multiple, um, uh, you know, I would say, private uh, public partnerships to make sure that there is a collection of thinking because all of us are learning uh, through this. Um, I can't, we can't say anybody has a perfect answer. So through our sharing, we'll be able to um, apply that. So to that effect, we have formed uh, AI governance and guidance uh, board that is meeting uh, to help to identify the right use cases 
and also implement them and through those learn uh, what is right for um, AI, sorry, uh, right use of AI within the agency. We also have a guiding principle and uh, the guiding principle is faster is not always better. <laughs> uh, so we don't want to jump into everything just because it is fast. And uh, easier is not always the best uh, because sometimes the easy solution could be a lazy solution and uh, we don't want to be lazy about the due diligence that we need to apply in some of these areas. So we will take those into considerations in um, everything that we do. So that's kind of a long answer to what we want to do with AI. Uh, but uh, I would say right now the focus is much more on the operational side and learn from that before we apply it into the policy and the regulation side. That's helpful. Um, Ram, you're talking about collaboration and this governance bodies, which includes the uh, FDA and external parties. Um, is that specifically for like AI specific topics or is that collaboration uh, extend on to other topics which uh, may involve academia or other industry partners? Uh, it's all of the above. Uh, you know, FDA has been a leader uh, like you know, some of the other agencies within the federal government in uh, partnering with the academia, uh, NGO, um, the, you know, the, the universities and the sources and others we have, um, we've done a fantastic job. And I think we have the framework uh, to do the same in uh, some of our uh, uh, AI uh, specific areas, right? And uh, that applies to even some of the data uh, work that we are doing. So we actually even created something called an AI playbook, uh, it's going to require some modifications based on some of the recent uh, developments on the AI space, but we have the framework already. Um, and that was done in collaboration with uh, some of the universities. So we already um, have a very deep knowledge of that and how to do it. And we just continue to expand that. Of the focus on collaboration, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a true believer that, you know, in some cases, the best growth happens when you get government, academia and industry to come together to find solutions. And I think your examples were exactly hitting those. Uh, Ram, I know I have several other questions I can go on discussing for quite a while. But as we look to wrap this session up, I want to ask you one final question. Um, you've been in the role for the CDO for three years. Um, if we had to go back memory lane and if you had to restart this role are there any things that you would do differently are there any things that you want to reflect over just now as lessons learned for the audience yeah um i think looking back um i probably fell into this myth that when you come to the government uh it's going to be tough to find good talent and it's tough to think get things moving my experience is actually kind of the opposite. Of course, there are pockets of that uh, uh, speed issues, but when there is an emergency, when there is a real urgent need, we move. Um, I don't have experience outside of FTA, but I can tell you for FTA, we move very fast. And we move with that sense of urgency um, that is on par with anything that I've seen in private industry. Uh, the second thing I, I wish I had a better appreciation of how much talent that already exists. Because I started in a virtual environment, I did not have the interactions that I would have liked to have with so many of the great talented folks across the agency. And um, if I had known all the great talent that was available, I think I would have built my network faster, better um, to solve some of the bigger problems. So I would say those are the two big learnings for me. Um, and if I were to, you know, redo some of that, those are the things things I would have appreciated and leveraged even more. Well, fantastic uh, advice and uh, takeaways, Ram. And thank you for breaking that myth. Government does have a plethora of good talent. So thank you for emphasizing that. Ram, I can't say thank you enough for joining us today and sharing your experiences and insights with the audience. Um, I hope we stay in touch and maybe have another version of this interview soon. But for the time being, audience, please continue to join me in watching other interviews posted both on cdomagazine.tech as well as on Deloitte GPS CDO's website. Ram, thank you again for your time. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about our strategy.